Hello everyone, this is Chris Chapa, math professor at Tyler Junior College, here with the solution for the week two puzzle in the weekly logic puzzle contest during math month, November 2021 at Tyler Junior College. The week two puzzle was titled Pearls. And if you're interested in finding more types of puzzles like this, I recommend searching Masyu, M-A-S-Y-U, puzzle. Masyu is the Japanese name of this pearl puzzle. Uh, in America, it's also called Pearls. I'll leave that up there. There we go, P-U-Z-Z-L-A. All right, so the object of the puzzle was to draw a path through all of the pearls, all of the black and white circles in this grid according to the following rules. Uh, rule number one, the path must be a closed loop that does not intersect itself. A little bit of a grammar faux pas there. A closed loop looks something like that. Uh, not intersecting itself means that we can't do something like that where it crosses itself in the middle. So one closed loop that goes through all the pearls. Uh, number two, the path must pass through the center of the squares it enters where it may turn or go straight. Three, the path can only turn 90 degrees and only at the center of a square. Four, when the path enters a black pearl, it must turn. However, it cannot turn immediately prior to entering the pearl and immediately after leaving the pearl. And five, when the path enters a white pearl, it cannot turn. However, it must turn immediately prior to or entering the pearl or immediately after leaving the pearl or both. So in other words, don't turn through a white pearl, but you must turn upon entering or leaving or both. You must turn upon entering or leaving a black pearl, but you can't turn immediately upon entering or leaving. And as we go through this, we'll write down some rules, some hints that will help us get through this puzzle. It is worth mentioning that like last week's puzzle, the solution to this can be deduced from the rules and the hints given within the puzzle itself, and there's zero guesswork whatsoever. So let's begin. In a puzzle like this, it's a good idea to start with the pearls that are limited based on their locations. In this case, that would mean close to the edges of the grid. For example, all of the black pearls in row A, the two black pearls in the bottom in row J, even the pearls in uh, H2, the black pearl in H2, and the black pearl in B3, and the black pearl in B5 are considered pretty close to the edge. I know there's some white pearls close to the edge, like B2 here, or this guy, or this guy. But as you'll see, being close to an edge is restrictive more if you're a black pearl than if you're a white pearl, because for a black pearl, you can't turn upon entering or leaving. Before we jump into this, I want to show you how the black pearls are very limited and how the paths can go through them. So I'm going to draw four black pearls, and then we're going to make some observations. First off, remember that in a black pearl, you must turn upon entering but you cannot turn upon leaving or, um, excuse me, you must turn in the middle of the black pearl, but you cannot turn prior to entering or immediately after leaving. So for example, in a black pearl, you can go straight across and up like that, or you can come down and go to the right, or you can go to the right into it and then down, or you can come up from the bottom, go across like that way. And again, we're focusing that we can't turn. So for example, we couldn't do something like this, like down, over, and then down. Excuse me. <coughs> I tried to pause before that happened. Oh, well. But as I was saying, you can't turn upon leaving a black pearl like we did in cell D9, which is circled right now. But turning upon leaving or entering a black pearl against the rules. So there's only four possible ways that we can travel through a black pearl, which are listed on the left of the screen. And there's something else that you can deduce. Um, if you are limited in one direction on a black pearl, that tells you something about the path. For example, look at the black pearl in A6. The path cannot go up through A6 because, well, there's no more room for it to go. And if you'll notice, whenever you eliminate one of the four options for a black pearl, that tells you something about the path. For example, if we cannot go up from a black pearl, that eliminates this one and this one. So what do these two have in common? Well, the path has to go down. In fact, you'll notice in all of the black pearl options, if you can eliminate one direction, the path must go the opposite direction. For example, look at the black pearl in H2 right here. The path cannot go to the left, 
because it can't turn up on leaving, but it can't go straight either. So that path cannot go to the left. If we were to eliminate the options where the path goes to the left, notice the remaining options, the path must go to the right. So it doesn't take too long to figure out a following additional rule for black pearls. If a path cannot go a certain direction, I can't type, a certain direction through a black pearl, then it must go the opposite direction. It ha it's a direct consequence of being required to turn when you hit a black pearl and not being allowed to turn up on entering or leaving. So with all the black pearls in the top row, we know the path has to go down because the path can't go up. And if it can't go up, it has to go the opposite direction. On the bottom row, J4, path must go up because it can't go down. Same thing with J10. In fact, on J10, we know the path has to go to the left because it can't go to the right. In H2, the path must go to the right because it can't go to the left. In B3, I know the path has to go down because it can't go up. And I know the path has to go to the right because it can't go to the left. Can't go to the left because the path would intersect itself. In B5, the path must go down uh, because it can't go up. Now let's look at A6 and A7, specifically A6. Path cannot go to the right because if it did, it would violate the turning immediately upon leaving the black pearl rule. And so since the path can't go to the right, it must go to the left. And similarly, A7, the path must go to the right because it can't go to the left. And in A2, the path must go to the right because it can't go to the left. And we already have some of the paths connecting. Are there any other black circles where we can, black pearls where we can make a decision? Yes. In D6, the path cannot go to the left because if it did, it would connect and turn immediately upon leaving the black pearl, violating the black pearl rule. Since the path can't go to the left through the black pearl, it must go to the right. Okay, are there any other black pearl rules that we can take advantage of? I'm not seeing any. All right, so let's talk about another technique, um, forced turns. Uh, well, actually, I don't see any forced turns right now. So, but I do see another black pearl rule that I can take advantage of, and that's the black pearl in D3. So this leads to a technique called avoiding closed loops, if you will. In D3, the path is coming down into it, so it must turn left or right. If it were to turn to the right, it couldn't turn in D4 upon immediately leaving, so it would have to continue going, and that would form a closed loop too soon. The entire path needs to make a closed loop, not part of the path. Since the path in D3 cannot go to the right, then it must go to the left. And now we can talk about a technique called the uh, forced path, if you will. In other words, the path that must go a certain direction. Look at C2, where the path is currently coming downwards. Cannot turn to the right because it would intersect the path itself. Cannot go down because it would intersect the path itself. That was not supposed to be erased. Cannot go down because it would intersect the path itself. So it must go to the left. And let me clean that up a little bit. A little bit too long again. All right, but back to C2, the path must go to the left and it can't go up because that's a dead end. So it must go down and we've connected a little bit more of the path. All right, uh, I don't see any more uh, avoiding uh, smaller closed loops or dead end paths to take care of right now. So let's focus on the white pearls. Now, the, the main rule for the white pearl is that you cannot turn when you go through it, but you must turn either before entering or after leaving or possibly both. Uh, I'm looking at the two consecutive white pearls in G3 and G4 right here. And in general, when you have two consecutive white pearls, there's only one or two of ways the path can go through. Either it has to go straight, straight through both of them because you can't turn when you hit a white pearl or it has to go vertically through both of them for the same reasons. Well, if it goes vertically through one, then it can't go horizontally through the other because the path would intersect itself. And remember, you cannot turn through a white pearl. 
So when you have two uh, horizontally adjacent white pearls, either the path goes horizontally through both of them or vertically through both of them. And you could say the same type of thing for two uh, vertically adjacent white circles. But looking at G3 and G4, I can't go down through them because now I've got the path intersecting itself all types of ways. So it must go horizontally through the white circles in G3 and G4. Now using a similar argument, it has to go horizontally through these two because if it went vertically through those two, then the path would intersect itself twice, once there and once there. So it must go horizontally through these two. Now look at the path in G2. That path just came out of a white pearl. And when a path enter or leaves a white pearl, it must turn. Well, if you focus on the path going through the white pearl in G3, going through the white pearl in G3 right here, it has to turn either on the left or on the right. It can't turn on the right because the right side of the yellow path is in the middle of a white pearl and you can't turn in a white pearl. So since it can't turn on the right, it must turn on the left and it must turn upwards from G2. How do you know it has to turn upwards from G2? Why can't it turn downwards? Because if turned downwards, now that black pearl is violating the black pearl rule in terms of not turning immediately upon entering or leaving a black pearl. So at G2, the path must turn. It can't turn down, so it must turn up. Now, using a, same arg a similar argument, but for a different reason, look at the path at G5. It just left a white pearl. And when it entered that white pearl, it did not turn because it was in the middle of another white pearl. A path must turn upon entering or leaving a white pearl. And so it must turn in G5. It cannot turn up because if it did turn up, then that would make a closed loop too soon. So it must turn down. And if you're wondering why all these dots are out to the side, it's because when uh, this pops up and I choose a color, it's still there and I have to click on the outside to make it disappear. Look at the path in F5, must turn because it just left a white pearl and the path didn't turn immediately prior to entering that white pearl in F4. Then must turn up or down, can't turn down, so it turns up. Look at the black pearl in H2. The path must turn, but it can't go up, so it must go down. Look at the black pearl in J4. Path went down, must turn left or right. Can't turn left because either it would dead end or, well, it can't turn because it's a black pearl. Can't turn upon leaving a black pearl, so it would make a closed loop. So it must go to the right twice because you can't turn when leaving a black pearl. Now look at the path in J2. <clears throat> if it turned to the right, it would dead end. And we need to close the loop, so it must turn to the left. And now it has to escape all the way up here all the way over and right here in E4 is the first place it has to make a decision whether it goes up or goes down. Look at the black pearl in D6 or don't because I can't see a contradiction by going up or down, at least not yet. Okay, so look at the path at D5. All right, now for another technique called um, avoiding dead ends, if you will. Sometimes it's easy, it's obvious to avoid a dead end. Sometimes it's not as obvious. Consider the path at D5. It can go in one of three directions. It can go to the right, except it can't because that violates both turning upon entering a black pearl and not turning when you're in the middle of it. So it can't go to the left. Can it go down? Well, it looks like it can go down, but if it does, then where does this path go? It's dead ended. It's going to go up here and there's no place for it to go. So in D5, the path cannot go to the right, the path cannot go down, so it must go to the left. If it goes up at dead end, so it must go down, and now we've connected some more. Now the path in E5 must turn to the right, but you can't turn in a white pearl, so it must keep going. And so now the, pearl, the black pearl in D6 must turn up. The path in C7 must turn to the right. The black pearl, the path through the black pearl in D8 must go down. Because remember, it has to go and not turn. If it went up, it would be turning. So it must go down twice because it can't turn up on leaving. And it puts me in the middle of a white pearl, which means it can't turn, so it has to go straight. Now look at the path in E7, must go down. Okay. 
let's see, look at the white pearl in G6. You can't turn through a white pearl. So either you go through horizontally or go through vertically. And um, I can't go horizontally through the white pearl in G6 because it would, the path would intersect itself. So it must go vertically. In F6, the path is forced to turn to the right. And now we've got a smaller part of the path trying to make a loop, this part of the path right here. The ends of that part of the path in H5 and H6 cannot connect because they would make a smaller loop that we want to avoid. Since they cannot connect in H5, the path cannot go to the right, so it must go down, and now it must go to the right. And now the path in H6 cannot go down. It would still make a closed loop. So it must go to the right. Making progress. Okay. What about the white pearl in C9? Well, either the path goes horizontally through it or vertically through it. If it went horizontally, then where would the path continue from A9? Well, it can either go down or to the right, but the only way it can escape is to connect with this path down here in C10, and that would make a closed loop in the upper right corner. That means that the path through the white pearl in C9 cannot be vertical, uh, horizontal, so it must be vertical. And now the path in C8 is forced to go up and to the right, meaning that the path in A9 is forced to go to the right and then down. And now we've got another uh, part of the path that's trying to make a closed loop here that we want to avoid. Since the ends of that path are currently in D9 and D10, they cannot join, which means in both T9 and T10, the paths are racing to escape the right side. Now, I'm about to enter a white pearl and I can't turn, so I must go straight. And now the path in F10 must continue downward until it connects. The path in H9 must turn. Why? Because it just left a white pearl. And the rule for a white pearl is you must turn upon entering or leaving. It did not turn in F9. It went straight through. So it must turn in H9, but it can't turn to the right. So it must turn to the left. Speaking of white pearl paths turning, look at F8. The path just went through the white pearl in F8, did not turn prior to entering in cell E8. So it must turn upon leaving in cell G8. So in cell G8, the path must turn, but it can't turn to the right. So it must turn to the left and then go down, and now the path in H8 must go down. When you get to the end, it's usually an issue of avoiding a smaller part of the path, making a loop on its own, and there's actually two of them. One of them is this part. That's the smaller one. You don't want to force that to be a loop. The rest of it, if you trace it out, is also another loop that we're trying to avoid, so we cannot connect the paths in I8 and J8, those can't connect, which means they must both continue to the left, eventually connecting. And now we have our path that is one closed loop, goes through all the pearls, and follows the rules for both the black pearls and the white pearls. The solution of the puzzle was to list the squares not used in the path, and those were A1, B1, C4, I3, J3, and I9. Again, if you like these types of puzzles, I recommend searching, is it on here? Masayu puzzle, because in uh, originated in Japan, this type of puzzle was actually called Masayu. All right, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, be on the lookout for the solution to the week three puzzle.